Welcome back to a Shop Dog Garage video. This one's on the 55 Chevy. And one of the things we got to do today, make our measurement for our drive shaft, figure out what we got going on here as well. I believe we had a 1350, but I will verify that. So, it's time to do that. I got a couple other things I want to do while she's up. A little bit of wiring work. Got to figure some things out also. I don't know that I actually have this connector. It's not the one I uh, had planned on. So, we'll have to look at that. I do have this. So, we'll go from there. And a neat little trick when you're working by yourself, just chuck a magnet on there. So I got a magnet holding that end and I've done it from all four of them. And this machine surface here always comes out at that 54, 3 16, 54 quarter range, depending on which one. So we're going to go with the shortest, which was obviously this one here. And that's going to be 54 and 3 16. And since we don't have uh, anything to work with, we had to go do our measurements. We need a 1330S, which is a Ford only, which makes sense because we have a 9 inch. So we measured the width, and by to do that, we actually used the inside diameter portion here and we had to raise it because this track bar and then we went from the inside of the lip here and then you know took it across and took our measurement and then to find our cap size which is what I'm set at right now we did that and of course that's 1.125 which is one and an eighth inch our width was uh, 3.6250 so that gives us a 1330s all right now that we've measured for that I've been looking at a few other things including yeah where do I want to mount the horns still haven't decided and then figured oh we did drop this wiring so it looks like I'm gonna have some nice things I can clip to here on this pan so that's nice to know and I've got to decide how much I want to hide here not a lot you can do with this aftermarket stuff and this I think finalizes the halo wiring you can see we got it clipped it's safe it's wrapped it's not going anywhere pretty happy with that and remember we got the halo box here and the main box is right there and on this side the halo driver is right here so I think that's about as good as that's gonna get when I've got all that pre-made wiring to work with. So, uh, I do know one of the things we're gonna do while the car is here is we're definitely raising the front end. This is sitting a little stinky low. Okay, I've been working back on the transmission. Uh, not normally a fan of convoluted, but I think it's actually the right product for this location. Although we're going to transition to uh, heat proof because of this exhaust tube right here. Because we're going to wind up bringing those across. We're not actually using this wire. This is apparently a neutral safety switch. So I guess we could have added that, but we did not because we didn't know about it. This is the current preferred block off plug. So we'll see how that goes. I did have one of these, so I found that. And of course here is the one for the VSS. So what I've got to do is decide how I want them wired. Knowing that I'm coming around behind here to this point, I might just uh, drill a location here for a uh, pop-in. We'll, we'll see, we'll see what I think of that. I do like the idea of keeping these all bundled together and heat sleeving up to, you know, a, probably about this point. Okay, I'm not going to do the zip ties and everything yet. See, heat sleeving here. I decided instead of the way I had it routed before, we're going to go in front of this and, you know, we'll zip it to it. And then I can use this hole for the reverse light and then we're actually going to go in front of the shifter and then you know we'll get a zip tie through this extra bolt hole here so that'll work pretty slick and that protects that VSS wire really well no road debris is going to hit that 
So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, and I threw a plug in the driver's O2 port. Obviously, I'm not plugging this one yet. But I'm not putting that sensor in yet either. I gotta pull this tranny. Okay, so I just pulled the center console. Because obviously the uh, shifter is going to have to come off. That's fun, but it's got to be done. So we'll have to pull that. And you can see I never really had it all that well mounted anyway. Just two screws kind of finger tight. So we'll get all that out of there soon. So, don't want to have to pull this transmission, but there just really isn't a choice. And just like that, shifter's out. All right, starting to pull some of the bolts. Got the starter out, got that bolt out. I <sighs> can't get these out. Oil filter. But that was probably going to have to come out anyway. Just so I can get my hand up in here and do work. So, well, I wanted to change that anyhow. So I guess the oil is going to be coming out. Probably not today. Or if so, it's later. Let's leave the oil in as long as we can. Just doing some of the prelim work here I think before I get any real progress from uh, the bell housing forward I think we're at a point where I've got to one pull the wiring I just did back off but two get all this broke free and get ready to do all that at least these are easy enough to get at so you know plenty of room for your hand for this cross member I do seem to recall that this wasn't fun to put in, but eh, maybe it's not so bad now. Oh, I can see why. <laughs> We're pretty close to the floor. So, eh, it is what it is. Okay, we're just progressing. We've got a bit more out. I took the two screws out here. So we got the Z-bar out of the way. Obviously, I pulled the clutch linkage out. With its little retention spring, everything's been going in the magnet. So, the way I think this is going to have to happen is it's just going to be so much easier for me to pull the transmission off of that bell housing. So, I think the next thing I'm going to do is pop these two bolts, you know, so that I can see how much tension we're under, and we'll go from there. All right, tranny is out. Don't know how much more time I've got before I gotta go make some supper. But you can see she's out. Let me uh, get the transmission actually out of the way real quick. And then we'll, uh, so I gotta pick the lift up, slide this out, put it somewhere safe. And then we'll come in and take a look at that with a light. Okay, so to show just how finicky this is, I've got a input shaft from an LT1 T56. And I've got that splined in. And you can see this normally will ride on a uh, sleeve. Yeah, right here. So this is what the carrier bearing rides on, is this sleeve here. And then of course those splines, they go into the transmission. And we've got our pilot and everything in here. So, oh, that's how snug that is. That's how the fit should be. Everything has to be exactly perfect, which is why this is convenient. So that's kind of where we're at. So I've got one, two, three bolts there, and then the bell housing drops. This little one here got me. I've been wondering why I can't get this off of here for a little while. Bugger. And there, time to go make supper. Bell housing's out. Ah, I stuck that input shaft back in. Make sure everything was still meshing fine. And it is. It is seeing very, very little play. That's what you're looking for. And then I just threw all those back in so I don't lose them. And so this plate doesn't wiggle too much. One of the things I did when I popped that filter out was you notice I put some plastic here on the header. Don't like burning oil into the header if I can avoid it. So there, transmission's out. I think that's going to do it for today. So if this is the end of the video, thanks for watching. You know, please like, comment, and subscribe. If this isn't, I'll see you in a minute. And a quick addendum. I did swing by and pick up the dual diaphragm clutch or dual disc clutch. So you can see all that's ready to go. 
So now Shop Dog says thanks for watching.